welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us to our second session of our Mental Health Matters webinar series. This is, like I mentioned, our second one, and I hope you're all able to join us for the remaining four sessions. As I mentioned last week, for those of you that were here, these sessions will consist of a short 15-minute presentation regarding the mental health topic, followed by professionals who will talk about their career paths in the mental health, behavioral health field. So we're excited to have our presenters today share a little bit um, about their career paths and then also Jasmine Rojas will touch on interpersonal relationships. So thank you all for joining us. Um, my name is Eloisa and I'm part of the One Future Coachella Valley team and we're excited to have you all here and to, like I said, learn about mental health and at the same time career exploration and wellness. We're going to be discussing interpersonal relationships. Um, hopefully you start brainstorming what this potentially potentially might mean to you um, and, and what kind of comes in mind. Um, it's, uh, for today, we're gonna try to go ahead and kind of like debunk uh, certain things that we kind of already are like predisposed to thinking when it comes to relationships. Okay, so who am I? Um, my name is Jasmine Rojas. I am a fourth year psychological sciences and biological sciences major at UCI. Um, my pronouns are she, they, and um, I'm just here as a resource to, to make sure I'm able to provide all kinds of information um, through my perspective as a college student and, and see how we can like turn these college things into like real life, um, into any academic or like professional endeavors uh, we might find ourselves in. So a quick disclaimer before we officially get started, um, the information presented here is not therapy, um, but we're here as a resource to make sure you get the help you might need. Um, and if you, throughout the, the presentation, if you do see any information that might resonate with you or, or you want some clarifications, um, feel free to connect with us and we'll be able to provide further assistance. Um, at the end of the presentation, uh, there will also be some additional resources that you um, can go ahead and make of your own use. Um, it'll have like names, also numbers and addresses. So community agreements. Once we get started, um, I just wanna make it clear that this is your safe space. Um, in this safe space, we're kind to everyone. Uh, we're also as present as possible. Uh, if you were present in our last week's presentation on communication and conflict resolution, uh, being present means actively listening, uh, listening to understand rather than listening to reply. Um, we also take space and also make space. Um, so in any time that you might speak up, uh, make sure you also have the same respect for someone who might also take the same amount of space you once did. And lastly, the Vegas rule. So what is said here stays here and what is learned here leaves here. Um, so the important rule here is to, you know, be vulnerable, uh, be as honest as possible as, as much as you're willing and able to do so. And also, if you learn any valuable takeaways, um, go ahead and spread that information out. But as far as uh, any personal information, let's go ahead and, and just keep it here. So a couple objectives for today. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, define what interpersonal relationships are. Uh, also define a relationship within yourself. So also you can't maintain particular relationships if you don't have a relationship with your own self, as well as defining toxic relationships. Um, if when there's good, there's also bad. And so we'll be able to, to define what those things might look like. And lastly, building and maintaining relationships. So quick icebreaker, uh, can you name examples of your favorite duo? Um, so for example, for me, uh, SpongeBob and Squidward. Um, they're a very interesting pair. You know, you have a very uplifting uh, person, SpongeBob, you know, he's very like, I'm ready, let's get, let's get it to it. And then you have uh, Squidward, he's a very chill dude, you know, he's minding his business. So interpersonal relationships. Uh, according to um, a formal definition, interpersonal relationships are social associations, connections, or affiliations between two or more people. Um, and so what does that mean to you? Uh, as well as um, last week with communication and conflict resolution, um, there's a relationship between, folk, but between two individuals or more. And so there's often a lot of back and forth going on. Um, sometimes relationships are formed because of some kind of connection, as mentioned in the definition. Something is keeping y'all together. And so that something can be either really good, if it's family, uh, if it's school, uh, if it's work. Um, and so anything that happens between those two things um, can either be really good or really bad. So as mentioned, uh, there's a bunch of different types of interpersonal relationships. Um, it's not always romantic as 
the word relationship often conveys, right? We, you hear relationships and you think, oh, you know, it's a, it's a romantic relationship between two individuals. But you can see relationships between friendships, uh, between families, between fam uh, professionals, such as like your boss or your coworkers, and also uh, romantic. So um, lots, of, lots of things going on there. And so you don't communicate the same way uh, with your boss as you do with your mom, right? Or, or your sibling. And, and you don't communicate um, with your professional boss uh, in, in a friendship. You know, in some uh, friendships, the, there's a lot of uh, inter, like, uh, inside jokes that you might not uh, want to communicate that to that to your uh, professional relationships, right? You don't necessarily type LOL at the end of an email. So there, you see that kind of different communication going on uh, between the relationship that you have with a particular individual. Um, so why are they important? Um, majority of relationships have the ability to improve your mood. Um, let's just say you're having a bad day, you wanna hang out with a friend, um, that friend has really good energy and all of a sudden things are fine. Um, they also help you reach your goals. Uh, so like you being here, the relationship you might have with One Future Coachella Valley, um, for me personally, the relationship I have with them has brought me a series of opportunities um, that are only helping me go forward, right? And so now my relationship with them is, is making myself a resource uh, to provide that kind of help uh, that I once received to everyone else, as well as social support. Uh, like I just explained with One Future Coachella Valley, I receive a lot of support and also with my family. Uh, by making them proud, you know, the only thing I can go from there is, is up. And if, if I'm making them proud, majority of folks tend to support folks who do good, right? And also they boost self-worth. Uh, networking is very important. Um, in times of need, knowing you have some kind of support system, uh, you have your really good relationships with folks, you'll be able to depend on others and, and things will appear to be fine just because of those important relationships you might have. So what is a relationship with oneself? Uh, good interpersonal relationships start here with yourself. So what does that mean? It's, it's being intentional and developing really good relationships of, of just creating healthy mechanisms overall, right? And so it depends with communication, it starts with being kind, and it starts with being empathetic. How do you maintain a really good relationship um, with yourself? It's, it's, it's as short as uh, creating short goals, middle goals, and long-term goals. So for me personally, um, I'm anticipating watching a movie tonight. That's something that's totally feasible for me to do at the end of the day. And also for the middle, um, maybe something I might want to do on Thursday. And long term, I, I really hope to establish a really good career um, that'll help me, you know, with any of the things I want to achieve later in the future. Um, and it's really good to be kind to yourself by um, having small incremented goals rather than just having one big goal that you just end up overwhelming, doesn't happen. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're kind of self-deprecating, kind of saying, oh, I didn't do this. So this and that, right? It's not being kind to yourself. It's about being honest and, and speaking kindly to yourself. Um, we have words of affirmation saying, you know, I am good at this. I am good at that. Even though I did not succeed at this, I do really good at this. And so it's about, you know, giving yourself a pat on the back and also just, you know, understanding that you're doing the best that you can. And also one thing that really helps with that is seeking others who fit your goals. Um, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals who are very ambitious and do nothing but support your future goals um, can really help just maintaining that goal of, of, you know, being kind to yourself and having a really good relationship with yourself and your own values. So I'd like to, to end that uh, part of the section with a quote by Audre Lorde, caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And so that's something that really speaks um, you might really want these pair of tennis shoes. And so if these pairs of tennis shoes are kind of like a form of self-indulgence, think about it, you are walking comfortably. Um, if any of my female identifying folks have ever walked in really uncomfortable heels, it is not good. And sometimes it's worth splurging that little extra $50 to get you know really good quality shoes because you know you're gonna be feeling yourself and you won't be thinking about you know the pain in the back of your ankles. Um, same with my male identifying folks. It's really important to, to you know, you want to go with like a nice fitted suit, makes you look presentable if you feel good. Uh, if you look good, you feel good. And so that's one thing. Um, Self-preservation is key when it comes to uh, maintaining a really good relationship with yourself. So it forms resilience. As I like to say, last night I took an L, but today, you know, we're coming up. Last night was yesterday, you know, today is a new day. 
And so uh, it also reduces stress. You're no longer stressed. You know what you're capable of doing. And so that lowers your cortisol level. Uh, if you don't know what cortisol is, cortisol is a stress hormone in your body. When that skyrockets, um, that's what causes you uh, to feel tense. That's what causes you to move your knee up and down. Um, if you feel anxiety, uh, that's cortisol doing its job. Um, and so the best thing you can do is just you know pause, take a deep breath, and say, you know, I'm doing the best that I can. And also um, productivity. You know what you're capable of, right? If today's a good day, you work hard, you play hard. You know, we heard that in the summer with Khalifa. Um, so, you know, being kind to yourself, knowing what you're capable of, setting a particular goal, a short achieving goal um, will help your, your um, productivity over in the long grand scheme of things. And also health symptoms. An apple a day keeps the doctor away, right? So if you're doing all these things correctly, um, obviously it's a process, doesn't happen overnight, but slowly but surely, once your resilience go up, uh, you'll be able to do all these things, feel a lot less stress and do a lot more. And lastly, toxic relationships, what are they? And what specific things might make them toxic? So uh, as any other relationship, a toxic relationship is between two individuals who don't support each other. Uh, there might be often conflict, um, sometimes one might undermine the other. There might be competition. And the most important thing is the presence of disrespect. Uh, disrespect is, is very critical when it comes to two individuals. You always want to respect each other's boundaries and each other as, you know, unique individuals who have our own experiences and own values. Um, isolation, obsession, intensity, anger, those are a few of the many things that can be toxic behaviors, right? You don't uh, have, if you've ever heard of guilt tripping, um, that's something that is, is pretty common. Oh, you hung out with X, Y, and Z, so why can't you hang out with me? And now you kind of feel bad, right? And so that doesn't necessarily just happen between friends. It can also happen between romantic relationships. It can even happen within your family. Um, and so once you identify those things, you, you might want to self-reflect and kind of contemplate what's going on. And if you need further information, you know, you can always refer to our communication and conflict resolution um, presentation that's uploaded on YouTube. And, and you'll be able to work these things just because, you know, toxic behaviors as individuals, we're able to grow. Uh, we're not static. We're very fluid. And, uh, you know, we're able to gain these things. So even if these things might be behaviors you might practice, um, the key is to, to first identify them and figure out how to change them. And so how do we cultivate these relationships? Considering our circumstances, um, we can do a lot. We can be authentic, uh, we can be vulnerable, and we can be empathetic. Um, and so by being vulnerable and empathetic, you understand that certain things are going on, right? So let's just say um, my best friend, for example, we, we FaceTime a lot because, you know, with our current circumstance of COVID, um, but even with vaccines, she's still not comfortable with those boundaries. And so as a person who really respects her as an individual, I completely understand those things and I'm very empathetic as to how our circumstance can cause our anxiety, right? And so I'll be authentic. I often tell her like, hey, I miss hanging out, but that's not necessarily affecting our relationship compared to if I was just, you know, you should hang out with me. I haven't seen you. Like, you know, guilt tripping, that's, that's very toxic. Um, and so by maintaining those authentic relationships, you can do quite a lot. And that's through quality time acts of service, receiving gifts, physical touch, and words of affirmation. If you've heard those, those are love languages. Um, for me, I am a very physical touch person. So you can imagine I might be suffering with the pandemic right now. You know, I always, oh, hi, like I'm a very huggy person. Um, whereas my mom is an acts of service individual. So for me, it is easy to go fill up the gas tank for her and she'll be like, I know my, my child loves me, right? So it's things of that nature. So you're able to actually figure your, out your love language. Um, if you just like Google it, you'll be able to take like a quick, a quick five minute test um, and it'll rank your, your, your um, love languages. And most importantly, it's important to love people in their love language, um, not loving them in my own love language because if someone is not a physical touch person the same way that I am, it might come off in the wrong way, right? Um, so it's about being very conscious, authentic and empathetic. Um, but some additional resources that might be um, helpful to you um, if you do find the need to seek any further help, we have Clinicas de Salud del Pueblo. Um, they're open, oh, they're both uh, in person and on Zoom. Um, they're available Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. through 6 p.m. Um, there's their information, as well as the Jewish Family Service of the Desert. Um, they're also in person and, and do telehealth services, uh, but they're also open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. and on Fridays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And lastly, the Indio 
uh, mental health clinic. They're also just over Zoom, I believe, uh, Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and also Friday, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, and also, uh, you can also visit Instagram. Uh, I'll keep this handle right here for additional resources. They actually have a whole compilation of uh, uh, mental health resources located um, for everyone, for specific for um, students, and also for low-cost information um, services. So feel free to check them out. Uh, but also, I'll be rotating a specific additional resources for the upcoming presentations. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so yes, as you can see my screen, my name is Michelle Downs. And um, RUHS, uh, also known as County of Riverside, but a little bit easier. My credential, uh, credentials are uh, licensed marriage and family therapist. I uh, attended Cal Baptist and my career was not linear. I started my life in, in a different way. And so for 23 years, I was a secretary. I worked in a couple of fields, but mostly in education, um, academics and UCR. And I, one day I decided, my bachelor's is in business management, but one day I decided that I wanted a career that had more meaning than what I was doing. And I decided to um, go for my counseling and psychology program. As an adult, uh, I graduated from my master's at uh, the age of 40, at the young and tender age of 40. And I was concerned about, uh, you know, thinking that I had a late start in life, which I didn't. Um, some, of, some of the things that have been helpful um, as currently my position is a staff development officer and I am the prevention and early intervention is that everything I have gone through every single position and every experience I have, it has helped me build up for what I'm doing right now. In these uh, position that I am, my um, First of all, what my unit stands for is for suicide prevention, stigma and discrimination uh, reduction in our community and student mental health initiative, which is strengthening mental health in students across K through 12 and higher education. So prevention and early intervention is that prevention and early intervention. So we want to provide programs and services before things get difficult before people have to go uh, through more lengthy things. And my current position is, to me, is ideal because it combines my interest for administration and managing all these things and also allows me to uh, participate with the clinical things that I've worked with. I have been a therapist, that's how we all start in these fields. So I had to put all the work and I had to go in clinic. I work from children to older adults. My favorite population has been the transitional age youth, 16 to 25. And I am a good therapist, I am. But I feel like my forte is in strengthening uh, others' careers. Before this position, and this is when I met him and whatnot, I was in the workforce education and training. So I started <clears throat> in this unit by not only helping to develop um, the careers of other co-workers here in, in the department, but also uh, talking about careers in behavioral health to students. So some of you may have met me during other presentations that I, that I attended promoting different uh, careers that we have in the field, which is not only therapists and psychiatrists, right? We have a, a plethora of other things. So right now in my career, in this position that I have, I, you know, technically manage uh, a few contracts uh, geared toward minorities and the community, Native Americans, Asian American, African American, Latino, LGBTQ. And so, <clears throat> Not only I manage the administration piece of it, but I manage to provide training and clinical support to the community providers that are providing the service. And that's a brief summary of who I am and what I do. Thank you.
Hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Dolan. I am the Director of External Affairs for United Way of the Desert, which means I am the person who makes sure that our story gets out into the community, um, that our PR is taken care of, and also I raise the money uh, so that we can do all of the wonderful things in the community that we do. I'm going to go uh, to my college career. When I was in college, um, I was actually a DJ on the radio. Um, I'd been doing that since high school. And uh, I was at the radio station one day and my boss said to me, you know, well, what are you, what are you doing in college? What do you want to do? And I was like, oh, I want to, I want to be on the radio. So I have a communications degree. And he was like, but you are on the radio. So maybe you pick something else. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, I went to graphic design um, and loved it, loved the art part of it. Um, but I ended up taking a psychology class on a whim. Um, I needed to fill another, um, another three credits in my summer courses to get financial aid. And so I was like, fine, I'll take psychology. And I loved it. Um, so I ended up graduating with my degree in psychology um, with the thought that I was going to go on to be a therapist. I was going to um, continue on, but my love of radio stayed with me. And I was on the radio for almost 14 years in Pennsylvania, in Florida, in South Florida, and Miami, and out here in the Palm Springs area um, from 2010 until about 2013. So it was an amazing career, um, but every day I kind of cursed my student loans. Um, like, why did I get this psychology degree? I'm not even using it. Um, until that faithful day when I wasn't working in radio anymore um, and I found myself, uh, due to budget cuts, needing a new job. Um, thankfully, I saw the writing on the walls and I had started reaching out um, to the community and saying, you know, I kind of want to get involved in the nonprofit field. Um, what's your favorite one? And at the time, uh, a lot of people kept saying safe house of the desert. So I ended up, because I had my psychology degree, uh, becoming the peer, uh, peer program coordinator for the Cup of Happy program, which teaches high school kids um, and some in college about mental health resources and that it's okay to ask for help and destigmatizing mental health. Um, so because that degree ended up coming in handy, uh, I did that for a few years and then I became the anti-human trafficking director for Safe House of the Desert and for Operation Safe House. I've worked with the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. Um, thankfully, my radio career prepared me for the many years I would be doing public speaking here in the desert um, and all across the country. I've spoken at different events. Um, I can speak off the cuff. It really doesn't take much to get me going on a topic. Uh, and it's, it's come in handy uh, both in advocating for people who needed mental health resources, in advocating um, for victims and survivors of human trafficking and of kids who have experienced abuse and crisis. And now I've taken all of that with me. Um, I ended up getting a job with uh, United Way of the Desert back in 2017. And I started out as the communications director and uh, worked on our story. And how do, we, how do we talk about this in the community? How do we talk about poverty and the way that people need help? Uh, and now I am the director of external affairs. So I've, I've really taken this um, odd path. If somebody had told me when I was on the radio, hey, someday you're going to be helping people who are involved in um, human trafficking, I'd be like, you are bonkers. And I don't even know what you're saying right now. Um, but the thing is, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Gilbert has a talk, I think it was during like Oprah's conversations, and she talks about there are jackhammers and there are hummingbirds. And the jackhammers know exactly what they want to do their whole lives. They, you know, if somebody knows that they want to be a therapist and they knew it from the time they were young and they go through school and they're like, yes, this is still what I want to do you're a jackhammer kind of person and you're just going to keep going and going and going and you're going to love it. And then there's hummingbirds like me. 
And the hummingbirds, we tend to take a bunch of skills that we learn along the way and figure out how to create our next opportunity, our next job, our next space in the world where we're able to use all of the skills that we love and bring it to new people. And that's kind of, um, I think, where the moral of my story is that uh, and it could be yours too. With careers not being linear, you get to pick up these amazing skills along the way, doing things you never thought you would do. And someday it can turn into being the person who gets to help people, help change people's state of mind, help advocate for your entire community and raise money so that other people can help do those jobs as well. Um, so whatever you're planning on doing, uh, no matter who you are, uh, you can take all the skills you have with you into your next place.